Freaking turn on for this one. <sighs> He's definitely. This guy almost came off. He's scale worthy. What are you looking like, buddy? No, oh, yeah, he's scale worthy. Hey, buddy. Come on. Nice. 
four pounds three ounces not bad damn Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of New England Bass Trackers. We are in a great pond right now, one of the great ponds in the great town of Plymouth, Mass. Um, finally in Daddy. the real deal vessel, the 14 footer. What's going on? I have a guest on board today, my wonderful daughter Alma. Alma, you say hi? Say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi, hey, buddy, buddy. Yeah. We're out here troubleshooting the, the grumman. Um, I'm dropping it off in the shop tomorrow. I'm not much of an outboard guy. Uh, I've been trying to fix this damn motor for like a year now, and it's just always puttering once it gets into high RPMs. It's a two-stroke, 30 horsepower Evinrude. Uh, it's like a 95 or a 96 motor, so it's... It's a little bit on the older side. Um, some would say it's freaking ancient, but um, I ain't made of money. So when I found when I found the deal uh, to buy this boat online, I literally just swooped it up. Uh, all I asked was, does it sink or does it does it float? And uh, does the motor need any work? Guy said motor might need a little work in a year or two, which I've had the thing for a year or two now, so. Um, and he had it garaged inside the whole time, so I don't have a garage for this thing. So it's kept outdoors, but you know, the engine's fogged every winter and the spark plugs are placed every spring, the whole night. Um, but it's still, I think it, I'm, I'm, I lost compression in one of the uh, cylinders. So I hope it's not, it's, on, it's not on its way out, but if it is, it's not going to be a huge shock. This is probably one of the more advanced vessels that I've got. Uh, got a, you know, we've got some electronics on this. We've got an aerator, live well. We can keep some fish if we want to. Um, actually, I'll give you a little tour of it now. Um, from bow to propeller, it's 16 feet, but it's listed as a 14 foot. Um, let me see if I can stand up on the hull here. Whoa, Jesus. I'm not going to try that. Whatever, I'll give you a 360 view real quick. This is the real tippy top of the, of the bow. Seats three comfortably, but I mean, I've had five, six people on this thing before. Um, got a Humminbird Helix 5 um, fish finder, as you can see here. Am I on right now? Oh, it is on him. Um, yeah. No, not off. We're on 31 feet of water right now, heading towards a bank. I honestly only brought out one rod today, the plastics rod, the Dobbins. But I put on some 25 pound um, field and stream straight fluoro. This stuff, believe it or not, actually feels like the Yozeri Hybrid, the nylon. It's it's a very thick diameter line, very, very strong. Um, a it has to be abrasion proof because I've literally tried to cut these things with a dull blade and it wouldn't wouldn't even leave like a an abrasion on it. Um, so it seems pretty trustworthy. It had good reviews online. I just happened to be at Dick's and said, let me try a different different fluoro for this. I, I, I lace up the uh, I lace up the plastics only rod with fluoro only. Just a preference of mine. Um, 
So my plastics only rod will only have fluorocarbon. No mix, no braid, no mono, um, and not even that hybrid nylon stuff that I put on my swim bait setup. But yeah, this thing, uh, this thing pretty much, we may even take this out in the salt water this year, I don't know. I think we, I think it's got the ability to do so. I've seen smaller boats out there, people take kayaks, stuff like that, so, I mean, I don't see why we couldn't take this out in the ocean. Bilge pump is one of the repair items that I want to make sure works, though, so if you do take on water, you can pump it out just as fast. Um, so really, the... The main items I'm trying to fix here, um, well, the motor, and when we're trying to uh, accelerate, it's almost like if once we hit like 20, 30 miles per hour, between 20 and 30, it just putters like crazy. So we may even need new carburetors. Um, oh, just heard something. My buddy Danny Zapala on uh, Fish Brain actually, well, I met him through Fish Brain actually suggested that it was the uh maybe the carb on this thing we'll see though all right guys we're chilling out for right now but i'll click back when we hook up right now come on come on stay on I can't tell how big this guy is because he's in a bunch of lilies but could be the lilies putting up a fight I don't know he's not small but ah it's a pickerel dude what the hell? Wow, first pickerel in a while. Oh, it's a fat pickerel. Come on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Oh, you're like in the weeds, buddy, huh? Buddy. Probably weigh him. Now yeah, he's a fat, he's decently ch chunked out pickle. I want to make sure your eye's okay though, pal. Two eleven on this guy. Even though I feel like he's heavier than that. I gotta fix my damn scale, man. I don't think this thing's working right. I think it's weighing under, honestly. Alright girly. 
anyway. Just don't bite my hand. I know you probably want to. Got it. You're good. She's probably exhausted. That was a fight. You'll heal up, girly. I know. I know. I thought you were a bass. So, damn, they, uh... Pickerel really burrow under the... Under the mud, man. You, you could have a... You could have a monster pickerel. I'm not saying that was a monster, but... You could have a monster pickerel right under you and you don't even see them. Because they burrow. But they eat the same thing as bass do, so they're attracted to everything the bass eats. <sighs> to be honest, there's a time of the year when uh, the pickerel pretty much eat all the bass food, and the bass are just kind of like, well, I'm going to stay hibernating until it warms up a little more because these damn pickerel. Pickerel can uh, maneuver in cold water just as easy as warm water, so. Their species of fish, just like the northern pike, can really uh, acclimate themselves to very, very cold temperatures just as easily as warm. So they're active all year round. I just haven't hit a pickerel in a while. And if you can remember the first few episodes, all I could hit was was a uh, were pickerels, pickerel. So. I'm gonna keep hitting these lilies. Um, yeah, we're approaching late spring, so a lot of the blueback herring have been migrating into some of these ponds that are connected. Um, I'm not even using a herring or any type of swim bait today. I'm using a Berkeley Crash Cross scented motor oil color with a blue teal flake sort of. This guy right here. Um, when it hits the bottom of the water, the bullet weight and plug allow it to kind of allow the buoyant end to kind of float, and it looks like some type of bug just kind of on the defensive in a defensive position. So, best suck them right up, and apparently pickerel. All right, I'll click back when I uh, hook up again. Clocking in that here. Hold on, Pally. Just weigh you up real quick. spot as the last time. It's always in this upper cheek area. With this lure. Another guy, probably a pound and a half or so. This concludes the latest episode of New England Bass Trackers. As always, I appreciate your likes, subscribes, and shares. That's number 73 subscribers on the channel at this point. And, uh, merchandise is, avail is available. T-shirts, QR code stickers. If you'd like to get some, just send me a private message on the many social media platforms. And uh, as always, keep on trying.